Thomas goes to school. Sodor has many interesting places. There's dockyards, quarries, and castles. One castle in particular is Ulfstead Castle, owned by the Earl Sir Robert Norumby. Near his estate lies a marble schoolhouse where children come every weekday to learn reading, writing, and arithmetic. One day, Thomas, the tank engine, was bringing passengers to the station at Ulfstead Estate. He noticed the schoolyard in the distance. My, those children must love going to school. I wouldn't go that far, Thomas, but yes, school is important. Every child on Sodor loves the marble schoolhouse. Thomas was still thinking about the marble schoolhouse the next day while waiting for his passengers to board his coaches at Nafford Station. Oh boy, would I love to go to school for a day. Engines can't go to school. You wouldn't be able to fit inside the marble schoolhouse. Thomas knew Henry was right. There would be no possible way for any engine of any kind to fit inside a marble schoolhouse. I'm sorry, Thomas. I know when something interests you, you always want to go full funnel and do it. But remember what happened the time you wanted to go fishing. That's true, Henry. But just imagine a soda or steam engine learning math, reading, and writing. I'd be the smartest tank engine in the world. After Thomas's branch line run, he arrived at Tidmouth Sheds to rest before his tea time run. Henry and Edward were also in their berths. Thomas, Henry was telling me that you want to go to school at the Marble Schoolhouse. You're not thinking of any silly plans now, are you? Of course not, Edward. I've learned my lesson after getting flapping fish in my tank and falling down a mine. My, my, what interesting stories of escapades, Thomas. Sir Robert, how nice it is to see you. You as well, Henry. And Edward, let me cut to the chase. I have to get back to the estate very quickly. Thomas, I need you to double up on your route tomorrow. I have some visitors from the mainland and visitors from the states coming at the same time. While one group is taking the big castle tour, you can bring the other group around the estate. You can count me in, Sir Robert. Oh, and a little bird, he told me you love going to the schoolyard. On your route tomorrow, Thomas, you'll be passing by it twice. Terrific! I can't wait till tomorrow. Just remember, Thomas, school is for children only. But Thomas was, once again, too excited to listen. The next day, Thomas was at the estate, getting ready for his first run. Guest, this is Thomas the Tank Engine. He will be your tour guide for today. Please listen to him carefully and enjoy. And once again, welcome to Ulfstead. Good luck, Thomas. And remember, you don't go to school. Of course, Stephen. Thomas was so excited, he felt like his steam valve was going to burst. Thomas was having a wondrous time telling the visitors all about the estate, its rich history, and pointing out the beautiful scenery. Then he saw the marble schoolhouse. And this is Sodor's oldest school, made out of the finest Sodor marble and christened right on the top with a diamond from Sodor's only diamond mine. My friend Neil leads the diamond crew it's a wonderful place, and I... Thomas! Thomas! Watch out! There was broken track ahead, and the buffers blocking the sideline from the front of the school was sinking into the dirt. It was very wet from the rainstorm the night before. Thomas applied his brakes, but it was too late. His driver and fireman jumped clear, and Thomas crashed right into the schoolhouse. Luckily, no one was hurt, 
but the schoolhouse was badly damaged, and Thomas was still stuck inside. Daisy, the diesel rail car, had arrived to take the tourists back to Oldstead. Thomas, look at the mess you've made. How will the children be able to learn today? Perhaps next time, you should be careful what you wish for, since you haven't learned from times in the past. Thomas was about to call Daisy feeble, a word she truly disliked, but no one would be able to hear him from the deep insides of the school. Thomas, I heard what happened. I hope you are okay. I must tend to the guests, but I've also brought with me Miss Lester. She's a teacher from the mainland, and she was on your tour. To help out, she would like to teach the children today during their afternoon session. But sir, isn't the schoolhouse unsafe, especially with Thomas still stuck inside? The first responders from the search and rescue center have assured me the building is still intact and safe for the children. Besides, it will be quite the experience for some of the brightest children of Sodor to be taught right besides Thomas, the tank engine. Guess you'll finally be able to go to school after all, Thomas. Even hearing that didn't provoke a peep peep out of quite embarrassed Thomas. Edward and Henry heard what happened to Thomas at Nafford and felt very bad for their friend. Thomas must be so embarrassed for ruining the marble schoolhouse. I wouldn't worry so much about that, Henry. At least he and the students are safe. True, but I wish there was something we could do to cheer him up. To their shock and awe, Harvey pulled in, looking exhausted. So many accidents today, and so many deliveries to the docks. What's a crane engine going to get a chance to rest? Well, Harvey, at least you were able to rescue Thomas from the broken schoolhouse. What are you talking about, Henry? I didn't rescue Thomas from a schoolhouse. Oh, bother! That means poor Thomas is still stuck inside that tiny schoolhouse. Come with us, Harvey. I know exactly what we can do for our friend. <sighs> Can't I rest my hook for a couple of seconds? I just got back from lifting Marklin off. Come on, Harvey! There's no time to waste! Meanwhile, Miss Lester was about to begin her lesson with the children. They were still amazed that Thomas was joining them. It's Thomas, the tank engine. Yes, I am. Now, class, Thomas is our guest, so we must treat him as such. But we have to complete this very short lesson before lunch. What's today's lesson, Miss Lester? We're going to learn how to count to ten. The children had never learned to count to ten before. But, Miss Lester, our counting kit was on the shelf that Thomas broke. Thomas now felt very guilty. Not to worry. I know exactly what we can use to teach all of you how to count to ten. Thomas, would you like to be my volunteer? Cinders and ashes. Of course, Miss Lester. Okay, children, let's begin. See, Thomas has one funnel, one dome, one, two, three, four, five, six wheels, and one, two couplings. If we add that together, it equals 10. Exactly. Now let's use each of Thomas's parts to count up to 10. Thomas, you can join in. Ready? Ready! And so they began. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Hooray! Ten! Thomas and the children could not have ever been prouder. Excellent class. Now up to lunch. While the children were able to run into the cafeteria for their sandwiches and snacks with Miss Lester, 
Thomas was still stuck in place and disappointed once again. But that changed when one of the boys came over to him. Um, uh, Mr. Thomas, would you like to share my sandwich with me? Oh, that's very kind of you. But engines can't eat people food. But perhaps a bite won't hurt. Thomas! Thomas! We're here to help you! Edward, Henry, and Harvey had arrived, ready to pull the little blue tank engine out of the schoolhouse. Children, would you like to see a real Sodor rescue mission? And they all screamed, yes! By the end of the school day, all the children had been dismissed and Harvey had safely removed Thomas from the schoolhouse. Thank you again, Miss Lester, for a wonderful day. No need to thank me, Thomas. Without your little adventure, I would have never met such nice Sodor children. And you, of course. So after all, Thomas, you did have a day at school. Let's not make this a frequent habit, shall we? I know now, Edward. School is fun, but my branch line is where I'm needed the most. Oh, Thomas, good to see you back on the rails. Listen, I know you're probably going to need to go get a look over at the uh, Steamworks, but I need your help again on some routes tomorrow morning. Why? Well, let's just say Daisy wasn't free of any incidents today either. And in the distance, Daisy could be seen, but she wasn't on the rails. Is Harvey or Rocky going to come and take me back on the rails? But Harvey had fallen asleep. He finally had his second to rest, and that made all the engines chuckle. All of them except for Daisy. The end.